Carmen. This is the traditional park of Santiago, the capital of Chile. It is set on 36 hectares with a perimeter closure. Here in my back, we have the subway station Quinta Normal on its main entrance. The park was founded in 1841 and is considered the best and the most beautiful park, urban park of the country, popularly known as the Quinta Normal. Its name is composed first by Quinta because it is similar to the Spanish colony background which paid a tax of one fifth of their income. Claudio Gay is the designer in French neoclassical style, putting local species in foreign as well. He names it as Quinta Normal de Agricultura. In 1841, it is inaugurated by President Manuel Bulnes and is left in charge of the National Society of Farming. At the beginning, it had 135 hectares and in 1842 it started the Quinta Normal League for production. In 1853, the Botanical Garden is built under the direction of Rodolfo Filippi. In 1875, it is made an international exposition of Santiago, where 20 countries participated and showed their latest technological and scientific progress. In 1876, the Natural History National Museum is installed founded in 1830 by Claudio Gay. 1875 is made an international exhibition of Santiago, where 20 countries participated and showed their latest technological and scientific progress. In 1876, the Natural History National Museum is installed, founded in 1830 by Claudio Gay, in the Exposition Palace, designed by Paul Lafort, French architect. In 1882, it set there the National Zoo, being reinstalled to the Metropolitan Park of Santiago in 1925. was firstly meant for the people to take hours of solitude and relaxation. Nowadays it's been cleaned and uh, uh, modernized the boat. So people paying small tax can get into this boat and feed the ducks. in 
the Palm Tree Boulevard. Anciently, uh, the high society people of Santiago came here in their carriages to take more hours of realization. Young people came here to have fun and meet their colleagues and study. Nowadays, and since many decades, the park is wide open to everybody who wants to have to lie down in the grass and being here a picnic day with their families, walking their dogs or for whatever they want. Now we are entering the Railroad Museum of Santiago. It has to be noticed that Santiago de Chile always counted with the first, with the latest technology of the world. The important people of Chile went abroad very often, as soon as they could, and brought to Chile uh, all the new things and new technologies they found. For example, telephones, telegraph and trains. So Santiago de Chile was always the most advanced capital of South America. This carriage was built by Juan Car, Carlos Ibañez del Campo, and Arturo Alessandri among other presidents. Traveled in it. It was also landed to the Cardenal Jose Maria Caro for pastoral journeys and eventually assigned to the Estado General Plan. For you to have an idea of how important trains were in our country, you take into account that our country is very narrow and very long. So this was the best and only way to travel through the country without having any accidents. And to have one way for trains to take a journey across the country, all over the country. So from the first region, Arica, 13 regions uh, southward, we have this media to travel, to see your uh, relatives or to know other cities. This was the only media. On this very same train uh, took place the going out to exile of President Arturo Alessandri Palma. This was the presidential track. This wagon, and on this wagon, President went out of the country. In the early 1920s, the salt enterprises, the, the use of the trains exploded all over the country. They were so necessary to trade the salt to the other countries like Peru and Bolivia that uh, they extended the railroads northwest, north, northward, uh, up to the other countries to save this mineral. In the south of the country, the coal miners were also in charge of keeping the, the way of trains very high, very high in the economy of our country. Trains like this one are our prize, our normal prize of literature, Gabriela Mistral, travel through the country uh, in a hidden way for teaching. Her labor, the labor of teaching other women and children to read and write was considered something against the government. So she, she had to travel hidden with friends and people uh, that carry about her to teach uh, the whole country that was very illiterate to teach. She had uh, like forbidden schools and she taught uh, mostly women to read and write. But she had to run away of the government in trains like this one. This train was built in England by Hudson Mayer and Company to serve to the uh, Ferrocarril Trasandino Chileno between Los Andes and Las Cuevas. It was active 
between the years 1910 and 1971. There were nine of these machines, three in Chile, six in Argentina. Uh, nowadays, there are two machines left and one in Argentina. We don't know its state of uh, preservation, being the only ones of its kind uh, existent in the world. These two men here are Juan Clark and Mateo Clark. They were the builders of this train behind. They had to face a series of great difficulties. Uh, the, the major of them was to get across the Cordillera de los Andes, this largest mountain chain of South America. And uh, Juan and Mateo Clark uh, had this uh, idea of setting a railroad through the mountains. They were born in Valparaíso, or Port, and they were sons of Juan Clark, who was Irish, and Matea Torres y Quiroga from Argentina. In 1871, these two brothers proposed the uh, building of a telegraph through the Cordillera de los Andes, through the mountains, to join Argentina and Chile. This project was successfully realized, uh, what uh, gave motives lately to participate in the construction of the railroad. This enterprise was, um, was realized with their own resources. See, uh, since the government or the state, the state itself, uh, didn't want to participate. The works uh, began on the 5th of April, 1889, from the uh, Los Andes city. Then the works were stopped uh, due to the revolution of 1891, the one that put President Balmaceda down. And they started again uh, lately with the other president who, uh, who did support this, uh, this work, this wonderful work to join two countries. The carriages exhibited at the museum correspond to the first order made by Ferrocarriles del Estado in 1923. The first project considered the purchase of 50 cars, later reduced to 46 units. This reduction in the order allowed a series of improvements to the original design, increasing its dimensions and considering a better isolation and interior details. The representatives of Glyn Hoffman were Saavedra, Bernard and Company, and delivered the first to December of the same, of the same year. wagon is only one wagon. There were big signs and this kept on its original condition of the early 20s. You can see the original painting and glass of the windows. This is the original metal and the, and the ceiling is kept also in, their, in its original condition. All these wagons were wooden. This was the way where the coal was put in. So when the heat was properly increased, they were ready for the capture. Representative of the trains used in the South Railway 
branches with a 60 cm gauge. They were modified in different moments. Reason why they don't match the original design. Nowadays, you can travel to other cities of the country, to the south, for example, Chillán, Talca, Rancagua, in modern trains. You travel from the Estación Central, in the center of the capital, towards where you want to go ahead. This greenhouse is a national monument of Santiago and it holds a 150 years of history. It is said that it was built in 1866 and was put into the park in 1890 as a planned observatory. However, since 1995 it has undefined use and it was abandoned. But lately the neighbor's community Eco Barrio Yungay appealed to the town hall to restore this building. The project may be ready by the first semester of next year.